everybody. Thank you so much once again for tuning in and having a look at what we have dished up today. And a comment from Penny Lane, also now known as Mona Chica, inspired me to do a little bit of an overview about water culture. And you know my preferred method of growing orchids. It's in Lekka only, possibly Ceramis, but 80% inorganic media. That's how I would like to grow my orchids with a few exceptions. However, as a rule, I would say I don't do water culture. But then again, look at what I'm doing now. This is my Vanda Denisoniana Dark Chocolate Star. And this is a principle of growing in water culture. Now this could be considered semi-water culture because you soak the orchid for as long as you want, let's say six hours, eight hours, and then you take her out and she dries out until then you soak her again into water and have like a wet dry cycle. So saying that I'm not growing in water culture is actually misleading because you know this is water culture, not full water culture, it's semi water culture. But in my environment, this is how I grow my vandas. I don't do the 30 minutes, the 40 minutes, I don't do that. I put them in and forget about them until it's the next one's turn before it turns nightfall, you know? So this would be considered semi water culture. Now there's other ways to grow vanders, but I'm touching upon the subject very, very superficially about water culture. And other channels do a much better job because they actually grow their orchids in full water culture or semi water culture as a general rule. That's not what I do. But when you look into semi water culture, you basically submerge the roots of your orchid into the nutrient solution or just plain water and let them soak up for several hours and then you take them out and then you let them dry and then you repeat the pr procedure the next time. So here is another vandacious orchid. This is my Vanda Chao Praia on the coconut pole totem pole there. Although it's a lot of work, I need to spray her a lot for the roots that you see here, etc., to hydrate and I try to maintain these growing tips for as long as possible. But down here, in the last two years, she has grown an extensive root system, and I have, for one year now, left them in water constantly. That includes the winter. And I switch the water out every once in a while, clean out that vase, and I leave these roots in here all the time. These are old roots, if you think two years, two year old roots, but they are functional. If I were to cut them, they would be green. And all those little nubbins you see poking out, those are roots trying to grow. And right now in this water, I'm taste testing a, a concept with um, an anti-algae thing for aquariums so that I don't have to keep changing the water out because of algae and I don't want my roots to get nasty. So that's why I may have lost the growing tips as I am playing around with the dosage, but I haven't lost the roots. And that's fine, there are so many in there, I'm not particularly concerned about losing growing tips. With all the other viable roots I have in there, I'm quite okay. But this is considered then for the Vanda Chao Praia, full water culture. Those roots are never out of water. But again, three quarters of her main roots are exposed to the elements, not the entire root system. That is my understanding of full water culture. And the reason I got uh, inspired to just do a quick video about the subject of water culture is as you can see here, my Vanda green hopper. I mentioned her in another video that she wasn't doing very well and then that was proven to be correct not only by the state of her leaves but she blew out of her pot and she was in full lecker. So of course 
roots are a problem. Instead of putting her back in the pot, I've had her now out of the pot for a couple of days. First in some nutrient solution of 300 parts per million with a lot of calcium magnesium and some seaweed. And I left her in the water, switching it out ever so often with normal reverse osmosis water and no nutrient solution. And then I left her a couple of days. This would be considered full water culture. You don't remove the orchid from the water at all. You just switch out the water and you clean it up and put fresh water back in. But basically the concept is three quarters of the roots should be out in the air and then some of them should be touching the water permanently. And this is the downside, I would say, in my case, of algae development after several days, which means a lot of cleaning. And if you only have one or two orchids to do that with, that's not a problem. Now, if you have 180 or 210, and you're doing that all in water culture or semi-water culture, if you have the time, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this growing method, but it is very time consuming. So green hopper has been in here several days because clearly she wasn't doing or hydrating well in the LECA method. So I'm trying to trigger some roots to develop and hydrate the plant fully. And I will be changing the water out today. For the purposes of this video, I wanted to show what a couple of days of the water would do in a pot. And you can see that little root tip. It was already growing in the leka, so I was lucky to see that. But it's extending a little bit, and now there's a little branching on the side of that same root. So there are advantages to using this method, not only if you are rescuing an orchid, but growing it permanently. Aesthetics are also very pleasing if you just use it in plain glass. But my idea is not to grow her like this permanently, but I need to get her established with a more sustainable root system. So algae accumulation, yeah, if you are wanting to take this growing method on board. Well, as things go, I got a bit distracted. So this is a couple of hours later from when I first uh, recorded the other clips, but not that it matters. I just want to say that I haven't, in the meantime, I've cleaned my pot and the Vanda Donisoniana is now in that Vanda tub soaking for the last three hours. And I'm still leaving it in there until later on when my Vanda Lavender Mist, Louis, goes in for the remainder of the day. So the water culture thing is extremely versatile. And like I said before, if you want to do the work with cleaning out your pots, get rid of the algae. Not that it matters, but depending how you display your collection, the algae can sometimes be a little bit off-putting for aesthetical purposes. However, it does not affect your orchids at all. The other thing I just wanted to mention is the danger of mechanical damage on roots from this method taking them in and out all the time, it can damage the roots. I have on my Vandas mechanical damage. They are not pristine grown. They have black marks where they've been scraped or bumped. And not that it affects the growth or the development of the orchid as such. It just doesn't look very nice. And on top of that, sometimes you can compromise a root tip. That's, that, that's something I deal with, but if I have 80% great roots, the 20%, that to me is collateral damage just for the sake of the 80, which is okay. So here you can see my green hopper. I've cleaned out my pot, and now I'm just going to fill it up with some fresh fertilized water. I just go a little bit higher right at the beginning because of the evaporation of course this time of year water evaporates really fast 
So I'm just covering all the root tips, even if they have not progressed in their growing. But I have another candidate over here that you can see. And this is Rhynchostylus gigantea, red spots or something like that. Big spot. I have never been successful in growing Rhynchostylus. I can't exactly tell you why, but this is my third. And should it be my last, then so be it. But I, feel, I know it's not doing well in the pot because in the last year it hasn't grown a leaf. It's doing this. This is mechanical damage from when I got it. That was from the shipping. It was a great looking plant. Now it's not. And that's been my problem from the get go. And I thought I would show you what the problem is. And here you see she has absolutely no roots to speak of at all. So that transition to the Lekka, etc., did not work for one minute with this one. She is now officially in rescue mode. What I wanted to do was put her into water culture, but I do believe that now it's just another pot with a bed of moss around her to keep her hydrated and take her inside into the dining room area where there is no direct sunshine and where she gets a lot of humidity but isn't exposed to the elements. Change of plans. What I wanted to do was, is now absolutely not feasible. We're going to go into full rescue mode. And I am never, not really a pessimist. I'm not known to be a pessimist. I'm a cautious optimist. But uh, based on my past experiences with these, you see that? It's just all, all gone. Based on my past experiences with these, I can tell you they never bounced back for me, ever. So I see this as the last chance saloon, and then we'll take it from there. When I first tried to transition my other orchids, my other Rinko Stylus, I use Ceramis because they're water hogs. They need a lot of water, especially in my climate. That didn't work. So I said, okay, my next one, I toned it down, did Lekka only. That didn't work. So I thought, okay, she was a weak plant, which she was, but you know, that's no excuse. And now, I've done it again with a very strong, healthy plant. Lekka only. Nada. She, they're not having it, not in my climate. So that will be the last one that I've done this to, because I feel awful when I can't get it right and they deteriorate in front of my eyes. So the purple is too much light and she is now going straight into just moss at the base. And I'll show you where she's going to live after I've washed my hands and brought some hydrogen peroxide for the base. Okay. Let's give her a little bit of a precautionary treatment. Based what I'm seeing here, the velamen is compromised clearly, but the root is still somewhat green. Clearly, I'm going to protect that by making sure that these roots are in water all the time. So I'm speculating on this pot or another one that is a little bit smaller and allows for much more humidity around the roots. This way I don't need to use that much water all the time. I have a smaller little, what is actually my little makeshift outer mask. And I'm gonna stuff the bottom with sphagnum moss for the maximum amount of humidity. 
and on top of that I'm going to put water in to this little outer mask thing so that the base is always always humid and hopefully I will get some more roots growing but I honestly I doubt, I doubt it like I said I'm a positive pessimist always keep an open mind orchids can surprise you but not always it's not always a positive thing the surprises that orchids do I sincerely hope so in this case full-on full-on rescue mission now we've de deviated a little bit from the subject there's about this much water and the sphagnumos absorbs it all but I think it's better to have that with together with the water in there to allow for maximum humidity and maybe those stringy roots will still absorb something but water culture is what I actually had intended for this orchid so I hope the other examples were of use as a little touching you know touching into the subject I'm gonna put her where she belongs and I'll show you so here's where she's going to live from now on or die I hope the former will apply and this is my dining room on the south facing window where the sun is now way too high it doesn't even get direct sunlight that is another subject I will make a little tour of this area and how it looks like now for the coming summer months so we'll see what happens if she will recover or not either way I wanted to just approach the quick subject of water culture very very superficially thank you Penny Lane aka Mona Chica for bringing the subject up I will put a link down below into a channel that is totally dedicated to water culture as a grow method Danielle's Orchid Ranch and if this is of more interest with more detail then my goodness I suggest everybody check Danielle's channel out because when it comes to water culture she's got it down and I admire that because I couldn't even save fowls trying to do what she does so great lady with a lot of success in this growing method thank you everybody very much for watching took a little detour this video but I think maybe we scratched the surface of water culture a little bit maybe enough to gain interest everybody have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time thank you bye